Sergeant Martin? Yes. Detective Inspector Holloway. Oh, good afternoon, sir. It's quite an honour to have you come all this way down from Scotland Yard. You think so? I've got more important things on my plate than chasing temperamental film stars. Would you like a cup of tea, sir? I haven't come here for tea, either. I sent my reporting as quickly as I could, sir. Yes, I know. I read it. Well, you must realise, sir, this sort of thing's not really in my line. Your report makes that very clear. Well, there is something I didn't mention in my report, sir. About Paul Henderson? No, sir. About the house. This is not the first time that something's happened to the tenants of that house. Other disappearances? Oh, no, not exactly disappearances, sir. Well, what then? Well, I have a file here, sir, which you ought to have a look at. There's something that happened about two years ago, sir. The house was empty for some time, and then the estate agent had a, an inquiry from a young couple in London. Hillier, the name was. Charles and Alice Hillier. Good morning, Mrs. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Morning. Glad you could make it. Thank you. Well, uh, shall we go in? Why not? Who was your last tenant? Queen Victoria? No. But the house has been empty for some time. Perhaps you'd like to see the kitchen. I hope there's a refrigerator. Oh, yes. Not the most modern, of course, but uh, definitely a refrigerator.
certainly does have some virtues, don't you think? I can't say I've seen them, Mr. Stick. This collection's fantastic. Somebody who lived here had literary tastes after my own heart. It's perfect, isn't it? You're not serious. No, I mean it. It's ideal for me. Oh, darling. Now, look, I promise we'll move back to London as soon as I finish the book. I haven't been able to write a line in weeks, you know that. Do you really want us to take it? Mm. I suppose I could bear it for a month or two. Good. I know I'll be able to work here. What sort of work, may I ask? Well, my husband's a writer, Mr. Stoker. Oh, what kind of writing does he do? Horror stories. He specialises in murder, in the most gruesome ways imaginable. You're back early. It's past eight. So it is. I must have worked right through. So I see. <sighs> Can I read it? Uh, no. Let me show you. Show me. Here. They say one picture's better than a thousand words. That's Dominic. He's the villain in my story. He's a strangler who's escaped from an asylum for the criminally insane. He roams the countryside at night, searching for fresh victims, laughing maniacally as he kills them. Sometimes I wonder where you get your ideas. Looking through the window. That's where I first saw him this morning, just after you left. You saw him? Only in my mind's eye. From now on, Dominic's my partner in crime. He's going to make us a lot of money. Well, here's to Dominic. Darling, have you seen the car keys? Huh? Yes, there. Oh. How's it going? Splendidly. I'm almost halfway through. Oh, good. You can thank my strangler for that. Dominic. You know, he's really taking over. I've come to know his mind. Almost the way he feels. That's what makes him so very... real. And so very frightening.
Hello, darling. Oh. What's wrong? I, I, I didn't know I'm... Mean. I, I didn't know it was you. I... Who else did you think it was? You silly. Oh, I'm exhausted. I'll make some coffee. Do you want some? Oh, darling, what's the matter? It's Dominic. I saw him. You mean you imagined him? No, I mean I... I saw him. Last night, just before you came back from the theatre. And again, just now. But he's just a character in your novel. You can't tell. I know, but I, I, I saw him. Oh, darling, you've been working much too hard. Your imagination's playing tricks with you. Why don't you take the day off and, and come up to London with me? No. No, not till I finish my book. He's in there. Oh, Charles. No, no, please, please. He's over there. He's sitting in the chair. There's nobody here. Didn't you see him move? He's over there. <laughs> Didn't you hear that? He laughed. Oh, darling, please. Toast, darling. Uh, no, thank you. 
Charles, you really must see a doctor. But I've got a deadline. I can't when the book's finished. No, now. How much longer do you think we can go on like this? All right. So that's the story, Doctor. What do you think? What I think doesn't matter. It's what you think that's important. I mean, what more can I tell you? A good deal, Mr. Hillier. I don't understand. Exactly. The point of psychiatry is to help you to understand. And that takes time. I should like to see you regularly. At least once a week. Perhaps you'd have a word with my receptionist and make an appointment. You do think that you can help me? I'll try. How's it going? It isn't. I think there's a storm brewing. A storm? Andrews keeps talking about a storm inside me. Everything comes from the inside, apparently. A projection of my own imagination. Do you know what he actually told me at our last session? He said that when an author creates a character, it's like an actor playing a role. And sometimes the role takes over. I shan't do any more work tonight. You just relax, darling. I'll make you a nice hot drink. Better? Yes, thank you, darling. Darling, what are we going to do? I'm going to call Dr. Andrews. He must see you tonight. As I've told you before, Charles, an author's characters are an extension of his own personality. Sometimes, part of it that he normally tries to conceal from himself. Please, try to relax. Close your eyes. Listen to me. You think of yourself as a kind and decent man. You love your wife. But you also have 
hostility toward her. Instead of expressing that hostility, you create a character to express it for you. But that character is only a creature of your imagination. It is not real. As I have said before, you're like an actor who loses himself in his role. You've lived with his character day after day. You visualized his appearance, dramatized his acts, thought his thoughts, so much so that you've come to believe that he really exists. But he doesn't. But I've been writing about murderers for years. And I've never wanted to become one. I mean, why should I suddenly want to do so now? Even in my subconscious. Go. Everything's taken care of. Oh, darling, I knew the plan would work. Now we can go away together. They said that I wasn't a very good actor. We don't have to worry about getting work. We'd have plenty of money now with all the royalties on Charles's book. That I wasn't believable in the parts that I played. Detective Inspector Chapman from Scotland Yard, madam. I've been calling from Dr. Andrews' office, madam. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. We found your husband dead. Dr. Andrews is murdered, too. Hello, Mrs. Hillier. Hello. 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 The police say they found Dr. Andrews' body. And that Charles has been strangled as well. Oh, that's right. Both of them are quite dead. Andrews first, and then Charles. But the... It was very easy. Much easier than I'd imagined. Oh, but that wasn't the plan. The point was to, to prove Charles insane. It's better this way. Much better. Oh, don't you see? They'll be looking for a killer. Perhaps they'll come looking for you, Richard. Richard? I don't know anyone called Richard. My name is Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> we found him standing over her body, laughing. It's not all him, you know, it's that house. The house? Yeah, there's something strange about it. Listen, Sergeant, I'm interested in facts, not fantasies. Very well, sir. Consider this. When that house was empty again, the estate agent rented it out to a new tenant, a retired stockbroker from the city, a Mr. Philip Grayson. Interesting house. Yes, it is, for the right person. You're retired, aren't you? Yes. Businessman? Yes. Oh, I see. Wife? 
I beg your pardon? Are you married? No, I've never been married. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to pry. I was just thinking you might get rather bored living all alone in this house. I'm used to being alone. As a matter of fact, I'm looking forward to living here and doing some of the things I had little time to do when I was working. Gardening, reading, listening to music. Oh, no. I shan't be bored. <laughs> She is beautiful, isn't she? My Salome. Oh. oh, yes. Yes, it's very well done. Perhaps she reminds you of someone. You see, she has a strange effect on people. They seem to see in her all sorts of things. Was she model from life? You might say that. Who was the model? My wife. She must be... Uh... Very beautiful woman. She's dead. Murdered. 
No doubt you've seen the rest of the figures in my exhibition. They're all murderers. That's what the public wants to see. But you said your... the model you used for Salome was a victim. A victim, yes. And also a murderess. I found her one day holding an axe. And nearby, the body of my dearest friend. It was the state that murdered her. I made a waxen image of her body, her face. I wanted to preserve her beauty forever. And now men come and stare at her the way you did. You will come again, won't you? Even though you know. No. No, I don't think I shall. Thank you. Goodbye. My dear Philip. Neville. Friends? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Aren't you going to invite me in? Forgive me. Come on in. I was so surprised to see you. So this is where you've been hiding yourself. I never thought I'd see you in this part of the world. Can I offer you a drink? Thank you. Scotch? Lovely. I was travelling north on business. Then I remembered you had a place about a mile from the road, so I thought I'd drop in and surprise you. To tell you the truth, I, I was getting a bit lonely. Uh, will you stay to dinner? Overnight, if you wish. I've, I've got lots of room. You sound as though you'd be afraid to be left here on your own. That's past now. And with me. We could never have won her, Philip. Either of us. We're not winners, you and I am. Anyway, it was a long time ago. Now she's dead. How do you manage to occupy yourself here all day? Oh, there's plenty to do. I read, listen to music, do the garden. I walk into town occasionally, when the weather's nice. That reminds me, I was popping my sockets and tobacco before I leave. Can I give you a lift in? 
Well, I wasn't going in, but well, why not? Rather a good antique shop here. I used to pick those when I was a kid. Did you? Would you like that swan as a souvenir of your visit? I wouldn't know what to do with it, unless you filled it with apple strudel. I must say, things are very much cheaper here than they are in London. Well, they always are, aren't they? Good Lord. There's a waxworks museum here. Yes. Let's go and have a quick look-see. Oh, no. It's sure to be dull, and it's such a nice day. I haven't seen one since I was a kid. Come on. Goodbye, Philip. Thanks for being such a marvellous host. Not at all. It was my pleasure. I'm only sorry you can't stay. No, I'd better fly back. I'm late now. Sure I can't give you a lift into town? No, thanks. I'm, I'm not going in today. I'll be off then. Bye. Cheerio. Take care of yourself. Thanks for everything. Ciao. Of myself. Neville, I saw you at that museum. I know. I came back to apologize. I don't know why I went there. I do. It was the face of Salome, wasn't it? Yes. It was uncanny. It was almost as though... As though she was standing there? It's exactly what I felt. That's why I tried to persuade you not to go into that museum. There's something evil about that place. Yes, there is. And I don't think either of us should go there again, ever. No. Well. Would you like to stay here tonight? Oh, no, I should have left before now as it is. Um... Oh, Philip, I'm sorry. It was silly of me. Take care of yourself. You take care on the road. I always do. Bye. Good luck. Hello. 
Hello. Hello, Philip. This is Neville. Well, hello, Neville. Anything wrong? I'm still at the village. I'm staying at the hotel. The Queen's Head? I know it sounds absurd, Philip, but... I can't leave here. I've got to go back to that place. Don't go there. You stay where you are. I'll be right over. Neville. you that my wife was guillotined because she'd murdered my best friend. Well, it was I who killed him and made sure that she was found near him. Can you guess why? The authorities let me have her body and I embalmed her in all her beauty so that she would be mine forever. But she drew men to her even after her death. Others came and admired her, like your friend and you. But you shall never have her, none of you. <laughs> She is beautiful, isn't she? My Salome. And Henderson moved in next. No, sir, there was somebody else before him. Another disaster? Well, of a sort. Uh, not like the others. Not like the others at all. It's that house. There's something about it. What? I don't know, sir. I see. Well, I think it's about time I paid a call on the gentleman who's responsible for renting that house. What's his name, Stoker? I tried to warn them. Warn them of what? The house. Well, what about it? Haven't you guessed its secret yet? What secret? What sort of a place do you live in, Inspector? Well, Plain, ordinary flat. Quite comfortable. But on the cold side, perhaps? What do you mean? Oh, never mind. Well, shall we get down to facts? I'm here regarding a disappearance. Now, I'd like to know who lived in that house before Paul Henderson moved in. The tenant just prior to him was a, a gentleman called Reed. John Reed. Quiet man. And although I didn't realize it at the time, a dangerous one. Dangerous? To himself. Jane? Come along. 
Well, Mr. Reed, you see I haven't exaggerated. You and your daughter would have no difficulties keeping it up. No, I suppose not. May I see the rest of it, please? Yes, of course. Let me show you the study. I think you're going to like this. Lots of room. With a bit of rearranging, make a playroom for your daughter. What a very lovely child she is. Yes. Jane? A bit cold in here, isn't it? Oh, no problem. This would make a nice playroom. Yeah. <laughs> what frightened her so? Uh, it was uh, fire. She's a little nervous of fire. I see. Well, that's a standard lease. Seems perfectly in order. Just needs your signature. Good. There's just one other thing I'd like you to do for me, Mark, if you would. Yes? My business brings me up to London quite a bit, as you know. I need somebody to look after my daughter, preferably somebody who will teach her as well. You're still against sending her to boarding school? You know my views on that subject. Yes, I do. Oh, you signed there and there. I'd hoped you might have changed your mind. No. Well, we shall have to get someone very soon. Expecting you since noon. Oh, oh yes, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I got a bit confused by the directions. Anyway, I, I took the wrong turn. Yes. Please sit down. Now, Miss Norton. Mrs. Norton. Uh, I'm a widow. When you telephoned yesterday, you said that you'd been a school teacher. Before I was married. Do you still think that you are capable of handling the education of a child? In the classes I taught, I had more than 40 children. None of them was like Jane, Mrs. Norton. Why don't you want your daughter in school, Mr. Reed? Is she a problem child? I suggest you find that out for yourself. She's in the study. Please. Jane? I'm Mrs. Norton. You mind if I sit down? You know, you and I really should get acquainted. From now on, we'll be spending a lot of time together. I'm a teacher, Jane. Your father has asked me to come here and help you with your lessons. I can see we won't have any problem finding books to study. Even a set of encyclopedias. What a nice room you have here. I hate it. But everything's so cosy and cheerful. Well, come on, let's go by the fireplace and have a nice chat. No! Jane? Look at me, Jane. That's better. Friends should always speak face to face, don't you think so? Particularly when they have problems to discuss. You know, if you, if you tell me what's wrong, I might be able to help you. Is it the fire? He always has it going. Of course, it'd be too cold in here without... Jane, I'm going to ask you something. Like, you don't have to answer me if you don't want to, but I, I do hope you will. 
It's about fire. Have you ever been burned? Did it happen to somebody else, someone you knew and loved? I'm glad. Of course, fire can never harm us as long as we're careful, so there's really nothing to worry about, is there? You know, I've often wondered just what we'd do without fire. Did you ever stop to think how much it helps us? It keeps us warm, it cooks our food. Even gives us light. Besides, it's really very pretty. I love to watch the flames dancing, don't you? Sometimes it's, it's nice just to see the way the colours change. Look. It's all sorts of shapes. I never get tired of watching. I'm afraid your daughter does have problems. You're not interested in taking the position, then? Oh, on the contrary, Mr. Reed. I'm going to stay. This river goes to a big river which flows into the ocean far, far away, see? Perhaps we could go on a trip someday on a boat. Maybe even as far as the ocean. Would you like yes. that? Yes. Hmm? All right, come on then. It's getting late. Let's go into tea, huh? Oh, I've had such a curious dream, said Alice. And she told her sister as well as she could remember them. All those strange ad ad adventures adventures of hers that you have just been reading about. And when she had finished, her sister kissed her and said, It was a curious dream, dear. Certainly, but now run into your tea. It is getting late. It is getting late. I think we've accomplished quite a bit today, don't you? I liked Alice in Wonderland. Did you? You read it very well. My father taught me. He said it would give me something to do when I was alone. Were you always alone, Jane? Have you never had other children to play with? My father doesn't like me to play with children. So all you've had are your toys? My father doesn't want me to play with toys either. Well, we're going to have to do something about that. Where are you going? To make us some lunch. You want to come and help? I'd rather just stay here now. And do what? Watch the fire. I'm not afraid of it anymore. Ever since you told me how you could see shapes in it, I can see things too. What sort of things? Pretty ones. Sometimes I can see my mother. A mother? Ridiculous. A mother died when Jane was only a baby. She couldn't possibly remember her. But surely she must have seen photographs of your wife. I haven't any photographs, Mrs. Norton. They aren't necessary. Jane is all I need to remind me of her mother. She's the living image of her. She grows more and more like her every day. And your wife must have been a very beautiful woman. Very. Well, she's lonely, is Jane? Mrs. Norton. That's your daughter's real problem. Loneliness. There's a park in town with a playground. Now, I could take her no, over... No, that's out of the day. question. But surely contact with other youngsters would only help Not her. Not yet. Please, I... I do have my reasons. I'd be glad to hear them. Well, you shall, all in good time. Until then, I must ask you to be patient. All right. On one condition. Oh? I want to buy Jane some toys. Good evening, Jane. Hello. Did you have a nice day? Yes, thank you. I hoped I might find you studying those lessons I left for you. They're all finished. Oh, good. Well, I've got some other things here for you to look at. Toys? Mm -hmm. I told you I was going shopping. Paint box, a jigsaw puzzle, and uh, a 
work in. But first, I want you to see this. He's very beautiful. this come from? You gave me permission to buy some toys. Educational toys, Mrs. Norton. Not this. That was a cruel thing to do. But necessary. Why do you treat her like this? Is it because you blame her for what happened to your wife? No. I was glad when she died. Yes, glad. Because by then I had found out what she really was. kinds of trees here, Jane. I want you to tell me their names. What's that one? Silver birch. Good. Yes. And that one there? What's that? Oh, um, a green, uh -huh. a green, a green oak. Quite right. And what about that one? Walnut. Very good. You do know your trees. That's very good indeed. Now, what about this one here? This dark green one. What's this? That's a yew tree. Quite right. You know something, Mrs. Norton? Hmm? In olden times, yew trees used to be evil magic trees. How did you know that, Jane? I read it in a book. Let's 
storm, isn't there? Yes, there is. Jane in bed? Mm -hmm. Safe and sound. She was asleep when I looked in. Good. You wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, I do. Sit down, please. Mr. Reed, you bring your daughter to an isolated old house in the country. You shut her off from all outside contacts. You even hired me as a private tutor so that she won't have to be with other children. Jane is frightened. You're not half as frightened as her father. That's absurd, Mrs. Norton. Is it? Then why did you throw that doll on the fire? It must be a power failure. I'll get some candles. That's where you put them. Quite positive. What is it? Oh, what is wrong? There are only four candles here. Four candles here. Where are the others? What did you do with them? Where are they? So they're all ready to sign? Yes. All right, then. This afternoon, what time? Three. Yes, that'll be all right. Yes, I'll drive in. Fine. I may be a bit late. Traffic's probably going to be rather heavy. But I'll get there as, well, I'll get there as close to three as I can, all right? Goodbye. Well, will you sign there at the bottom on all four copies? Let's go for a walk. Huh? All right. Come on. Gone now. Sure. Can, can I get you a drink? No, no. Perfectly all right, thank you. I'm sorry.
Mr. Reed. Oh. What is it? I'll get the doctor. No, 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 no. Hello, Dr. Brady. Yes, look, can you come round at once? This is Mrs. Norton, Yew Tree House. Yes, I'm afraid it, it is very urgent, yes. Well, thank you so much. We'll, we'll be expecting you. Nothing wrong with your heart. No fever, pulse and respiration normal. And you say the pain's gone? Yes, quite gone. Well, I suggest you stop by my office tomorrow where we take a few lab tests and x-rays. Probably just an old-fashioned case of indigestion. Well, I shall expect you in the morning. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. Good night. Are you sure you're feeling better? Yes, I'll be all right now. Then I'll say good night. Anne. Anne, I... I know you haven't understood why I've been treating Jane the way I do. I, I didn't ever want to tell you, but... Now I know I've got to. It's because I'm afraid of her. Just as I was afraid of her mother before her. Afraid of a child? She's not just a child. She's evil. Those candles I was looking for, she made a wax image of me out of them. You must find it. You must search the house, but you must find that doll. You must find it before it's too late. <laughs> Give me that doll. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give me the doll, Jane. Now, look, I promise you nothing will happen. Here, we'll go on just as before. Nothing will happen. Give me the doll, Jane. He said I couldn't have a real doll. This isn't real. It's only wax. Come on, darling. Give me the doll, please, please. Give me the doll. Jane. Jane! It wasn't the man or the child or what either of them believed that caused the tragedy. It was the house. I'm not interested in superstitions, but in facts. About its next occupant. Paul Henderson, the film star who disappeared. Yeah, that's the case I'm on. Understand the house. And you might find out what happened to it. What do you mean? He only wanted the house for a short time. I tried to discourage him from taking it. Why? Well, I didn't think he'd be happy there. Not with his personality. Still, if he really wanted it. I remember waiting for him to arrive. Yes, I like it. You see, I told you, this place is absolutely ideal for you. Yes. Well, it's just for a few months while we're shooting the picture. 
Of course, the main advantage is that it's less than an hour's drive from the studio. Hmm, does seem quite comfortable. Before you decide. I've already decided. But to take it. Oh. In that case, I feel it's only fair to warn you. Warn me? The former tenants. There were, um, tragedies. Are you trying to tell me that this house is haunted? Not exactly. Hmm. What a pity. I would have liked a ghost. You see, it isn't that I just star in horror pictures. I'm an expert on the whole subject. Ghosts, vampires, werewolves, witches, demons. In fact, there's very little that I don't know on the subject of the supernatural, Mr... Um... Stoker. Stoker? Hmm. That's true. This is the third film Mr. Henderson and I will have made together. And I know him pretty well by now. At heart, he is pure gothic. You know, Paul, sometimes, I think, you'd feel more at home in some medieval castle. Yes. Yes, that's right. A castle. You approve, Mr. Henderson? Yes. Oh, yes, Mr. Petheridge. I approve of this. But hardly of that. Call sheep for tomorrow, Mr. Henderson. Any similarity between this model and that set is purely coincidental. It's all we could afford on the budget. Paul, I'm so sorry. Everything all right, I hope? No. Everything is not all right. As long as you and your art director here insist on my acting in this rabbit hutch. What's wrong with you? Tell me, Mr. Talmadge. Since leaving the depressing confines of television, how many films have you made? Well, actually, this is my second. But your first horror film? Well, let me tell you, Mr. Talmadge, I have made hundreds of them. Hundreds. Oh, my God. And if I go on working for this company, I shall finish up looking like him. Look at the scenery. Look at it. So flimsy, you could blow peas through it. Please, Mr. Henderson, it's been freshly painted. That's what's wrong with the present day horror films. There's no realism. Not like the old ones now, the great ones. Frankenstein, Phantom of the Opera, Dracula. The one with Bella Lugosi, of course, not this new fella. They didn't have freshly painted scenery. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure you'll like your vampire costume, uh, uh, Rita. Do you please bring over the cloak from Mr. Henderson? Well, who did this belong to? The flying nun? Oh, it looks perfectly all right to me. My dear fellow, it's too new. It's not sinister enough. Look, I want a wardrobe that looks as though it had been lived in. Or died in. Well, what do you expect us to do? Rub a graveyard? Take this schmutter away, madam, and use it for draperies. But, but uh, we're scheduled to start shooting tomorrow. We haven't time to find anything else. But it looks as though I shall have to find something for myself, doesn't it? Mr. Henderson! Wardrobe mistresses and effectual art directors. No budget pictures. Curse of the bloodsuckers. Come. Your call sheet for tomorrow, Mr. Henderson. By the way, somebody left this card on my dressing room mirror. Any idea who it was? Uh, not at all, Mr. Anderson. Right, thank you. Anybody here? Shop? Hmm. 
May I be of some assistance? Uh, you are... Uh... Yes. I am von Hartmann. You are a celebrant? I beg your pardon. Oh, I see what you mean. No. Uh, <coughs> of course, I have performed the Black Mass on many occasions. Ah. In my films, you understand. My name is Henderson. Paul Henderson? The film actor? I'm afraid, sir, I do not patronize the kinema. Oh. Yes, well, I'm looking for a cloak. A cloak? Yes, a long black cloak, something old and worn. The sort of thing that might have been used by a Transylvanian vampire. A vampire's cloak? Yes, I was hoping to find something that looked authentic. It's so important, don't you think? I think I may be able to help you, sir. I think this may well be what you require, sir. Try it on. It's funny, I felt a sort of chill. Uh, yes, it's been a long time down below. It's very cold up there. Yes. How much are you asking for it? Shall we say... Thirteen shillings. It's an odd sum. Thirteen shillings a week. No, my dear sir. Thirteen shillings and it's yours. For life. Well, that seems very reasonable. Ten, seven, twelve, thirty. I shall soon be closing this establishment. I only hope you put the cloak to its proper use. My dear Mr. von Hartmann. In my films, there is nothing improper. Shall I put it in a bag? Oh, thank you, no. no. I'll take it over my arm. My car is just outside. Good day, sir, and thank you. Thank you. Now I shall be able to rest in peace. Come. Ready in two minutes, Mr. Henderson. Right, thank you. Ready for you now, sir. Right, thank you. I'll bring the cloak for you, sir. Yes, thank you. Well, come into close up halfway through the scene and cut just after you kiss her. Then make up and put in your fangs for the next shot, and we'll come in from the other angle as you raise your head. Look, I have done this sort of thing before, you know. Yes, well, I think we'll try a take. Kill her, right? Now, quiet, please, quiet. Turn over. Speed. Marking. 27, take one. Action. Must you really go? But, but it's almost midnight. I'm not afraid. Even though your father believes that in my family there runs a thirst for blood? You mustn't take him seriously. He still believes in the old superstitions of our land. That at the stroke of twelve, the vampire must feast. But do you believe it? I only know that I love you. Goodbye, my dearest. Okay. 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 Sound good. Ah! Ah! Paul! Paul! Oh! Oh! You beast! You bit me! Oh! Oh, 
all, that's a very spent performance, but you really don't have to get quite so carried away. Vegetarian. Morning, Mr. Henderson. Morning. What scenes are we doing today? 24, 35, 53, and 89. None with a cloak? No, sir. Thank God. Has Miss Lind arrived yet? Uh, yes, sir. She's over there. Carla, I really must apologize for what happened yesterday. I don't know what came over me. I've been playing vampires for years, but I've never actually bitten anybody before. Then why start on me? Carla, please. Am I forgiven? All right, Paul. But it will cost you a dinner. Head back to my cottage afterwards for Chamay. If you promise, I'll be safe with you. Safe as houses. Thank you for a lovely dinner, Paul. My dear Carla, it's the least I could do under the circumstances. Let me recharge your glass. Thank you. It's rather good, don't you think? No. Oh. Doesn't do you just? Good heavens. What is it? Listen to this. Fire destroys costumery shop. The salvage authorities investigating the cause of the fire are puzzled by the discovery of a coffin buried in the earth of the cellar beneath the shop containing the body of an elderly man. Although dead for years, the body was quite well preserved and death appeared to be from natural causes. It's von Hutton. Who? The man from whom I bought my cloak. He said he was closing the place and was glad to find someone to give it to. Well, that someone was me. What are you talking about? I'll show you what I'm talking about. This. I asked for something authentic. Well, don't you see, this is authentic. That old man was a vampire. And this was his cloak. He had to pass it on to someone before he could die carries his spirit and transfers his bloodlust to whoever wears it. I know about these things. I've read all about them. That's why I bit you last night, and that's... that's why I... 
Excuse me. What are you going to do? I'm going to burn it. Oh, surely you don't. Oh, look, it's only an old cloak. Every time I wear this, I'll turn into a vampire. Oh, nonsense. Put it on. Prove to yourself that... No. It's... Look at the time. It's nearly midnight. The witching hour. There's no telling what might happen. Paul, I think you are afraid. Me? Afraid? Nonsense. Prove to yourself that it's only a silly superstition. Come on, put it on. Very well. But I, I must say I'm... Well, I'm not over keen on the idea. Nothing happened. I can't understand it. Wait a minute. This isn't my cloak. No. This one is. Carla. Carla, no. No. Don't put that on. You'll turn into a vampire. Carla. Carla, please. We loved your film so much, we wanted you to become one of us forever. Welcome to the club. Carla! <laughs> Carla! <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Carla, this is going too far. Carla! 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 You must be joking. Now, what sort of a crazy story is that? Oh, I just thought it might amuse you. Look, I'd like to see the house. May I have the keys, please? If you wait until the morning, I'd be most happy to accompany you. No, I'd like to see the house tonight. One question, if I may. In your job, do you ever give anyone another chance? Someone who's not likely to commit a crime again. All crimes must be paid for. That's the law. I'd not advise your going to the house. Not alone. The keys, please. You've heard what's happened there. Haven't you fathomed its secret yet? The keys, please. I still say you'd do better to wait until the morning. The electricity's cut off. I know what I'm doing. Do you?
Perhaps you understand the secret of this house now. Precisely. It reflects the personality of whoever lives in it and treats him accordingly. I hope it finds a proper tenant soon. Perhaps you would like it. There's nothing to be afraid of, if you're the right sort of person. Think it over. <laughs> 